chiropractic is a celebration of life. And just as that brought vitality and energy to a group of people that were walking into a Belgian train station, so too when people walk into your practice, it's a celebration of life. The walls, the textures, the sounds, the energy, the adjustments, the babies, all is that same process of celebration, isn't it? And don't we want the same type of interruption in the pattern of people's minds and the pattern of people's lives to walk into our offices with such vitality, with such passion, with such connectedness that it that causes them to stop and to say, oh yeah, that's what it's really about. Isn't that what we want in our practice? But what did it take to pull that off? A vision, an idea, energy, coordination, systems, procedures, training. What does it take to pull it off in our practice? Yes, we've heard all weekend it's about coming from the heart, about having a vision. But it's doing the work, working hard. We've heard that a number of times by a number of people. I say it in my seminars, I said, you know, you got to work hard. I would love to have six-pack abs and big biceps. I would love to have Sam Salimo's body. But if I don't go to the gym, pick up the weights, and do the crunches, I don't get the product. So too in our practices, for us to create that kind of energy, that type of passion, that type of vitality, it takes work. It just doesn't happen. It's desire. But with that desire needs to be the energy, the commitment to making it happen. Look at this weekend. What energy, passion, and dedication to allow this celebration to occur this weekend. Hmm? But the amount of work and energy and thought and planning that also had to happen to allow this to occur. Everybody take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Close your eyes for a moment. Really pay attention. What's the origination of your breath? Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. The breath connects the mind and the body. The first thing we do when we come into this world, it will be the last thing we do when we leave. It is, I believe, what every adjustment frees, connects us to. Every adjustment expands our breath, the breath of life in every cell, the breath of life in our nervous system, that expansion and contraction, that source of creativity, the source of our vitality, the expression of that innate wisdom within us. Open your eyes. <clears throat> Why do you do what you do? Why do I do what I do? Why do our practice members and patients do what it is that they do? What is the origination of our energy? What's the origination of our doingness? What moves us? What motivates us? Is it our passion? Is it our desire? Is it our fear? I'm going to tell you, when chiropractic comes from the heart, people will come from the woodwork. There is nothing more powerful on our planet than the power of love. There is nothing more brilliant and beautiful of creativity than that force of love. It is truly the most divine experience that we can have as human beings. And although we shun away from fear, it is not to be suppressed. Our fears connect us to our humanness. And rather than ignoring the fear, rather than not acknowledging that fear exists, rather than suppressing it or, or, or denying it, I challenge you to look at your fears. Embrace your fears. Embrace my fears. It connects us to our humanness and it can be the source towards our divinity. To allay the fears to come to peace with fears, to recognize that inside of us there is a vital energy of truth that can overcome all fears. But suppressing fear is not an answer, and denying it is not an answer. Our breath will allow us to move from our fear toward our divinity. Take a deep breath in, and deep breath out. What an amazing weekend this has been. From when Jay began on Thursday, Thursday? Friday, Friday morning. I remember Friday night sitting here, a couple of people were saying, well, this is just like the old DE days. 
It was an unbelievable, palpable energy. And I've been to many new beginnings, many new beginnings, many seminars. But it carried through all day Saturday to today. Gene, Gene where are you? Jeannie, the story you told. Uh, oh, my God. An absolutely amazing weekend. Applaud yourselves for creating that energy, that space. A Hopi elder once said, you have been telling people that this is the 11th hour. Now you must go back and tell people that this is the hour. There are things to be considered. Where are you living? What are you doing? What are your relationships? Are you in right relation? Know your garden. It is time to speak your truth. Create your community. Be good to each other. And do not look outside yourself for a leader. He clasped his hand together and smiled and said, this could be a good time. There is a river flowing now very fast. It is so great and swift that there are those who will be afraid. They will try to hold on to the shore. They will feel that they are torn apart and will suffer greatly. Know that the river has its destination. The elders say we must let go of the shore, push off to the middle of the river, keep our eyes open and our heads above water. And I say, see who is there with you and celebrate. At this time in history, we are taking nothing personally, least of all ourselves. From the moment that we do, our spiritual growth and journey comes to a halt. The time for the lone wolf is over. Gather yourselves. Banish the word struggle from your attitude and your vocabulary. All that we do now must be done in a sacred manner and in celebration. We are the ones that we've been looking for. We are the ones that we have been looking for. Why do we come to New Beginnings? For agreement. To bathe ourselves with those brothers and sisters who see the world as we do. We come to New Beginnings for fellowship, for friendship, to join together and to create a palpable vibration that reaches down to our core that we can then carry into our practices and our lives. But what happens this weekend is what happened this weekend. The question is, what will you take with you? What will you change? How will you lead? I will tell you that Peter will take the love, the compassion, the inspiration that you've all given me, either from the platform or in the vendor room or in the hallways or at dinner. I commit that I will change myself to be a better lover, to be a better father, a better spouse, to be a better chiropractor, a better healer, a better servant. And I commit myself to being a better leader in my profession, to my practice members, my patients, my spouse, my children, 